Why, hello there. Have you recently got into running? Need advice on expanding your shoe selection? Maybe you're just obsessed with running shoes and you just want more than you're in the right place. My name's Ed Armslingbud and welcome to my channel. I like running shoes quite a lot. Today I'm going to walk you through my top tips on building a running shoe rotation, a shoe selection for all occasions. Welcome to Edwin's Foam Fantasy. Hey cats, Ed Bud here, and thanks for joining me once again on the channel. If you're enjoying the content here and you haven't done so yet, please hit that subscribe button, but also click that bell for notifications of when I roll those new videos out for you. It helps the channel out a huge amount too, if you give this video a thumbs up like, but also share it with your running buddies. Merci beaucoup. Maybe the recent World Marathon series has sparked your interest. You've been watching it on TV, You've been watching your mates go out and do a 20 mile long run on a Sunday. Perhaps you've gone and done a 5k for charity. You're perhaps frequently running longer distances every single week, but you're a bit bewildered by the endless running shoe models released by the main manufacturers. Don't fret, Ed Bird is here to save the day. Here's my breakdown on how to build yourself a running shoe rotation, or actually whether you really need a running shoe rotation or not. <gasps> because I don't think a lot of people do. Firstly, the question, why bother? Should you actually get more than one pair of running shoes? Well, yes, I think you should. Let's not forget, if you're using one pair day in, day out, then it's gonna wear out pretty quickly, right? The foam will compress in the midsole and it's gonna lose that fresh feeling. A little bit like a recently washed dog after it leaps into that muddy pond. We gotta remember here that not all running shoes are designed the same. Some models provide a few additional benefits than others. I guess they're more suited for certain run types, I suppose. I think if you're perhaps running just a few kilometers a week, then you probably don't need loads of shoes. Most people I know that are into running shoes, though they find a way. There's always some excuse as to why they need another pair. First off, let's start with those daily miles. Picture this, it's a cold, dull Tuesday afternoon. Your training plan has just an easy three to four mile run. You need an all-rounder. You need something to munch up those everyday miles. For the majority of people that are out to improve their running, most of the bulk of their miles in a week are probably gonna be an easier pace. As such, you need a shoe that's kinda middle of the road. Things like the Nike Pegasus 38 or the Reebok Energy 3, perhaps even the Adios 6, I suppose, from Adidas, might fit into that everyday use category. Something that's stable enough, maybe medium in terms of weight. You don't want lots of bulk, but something with a little bit of padding and cushion, a little bit of protection for the foot, capable of a reasonable pace range as well. A few overlays here and there to provide some protection, some padding there in the heel to protect the ankle and the Achilles. Just something to soak up the miles with relative ease. I think for an everyday shoe, the midsole stack height will be very much down to the runner and your preference. As a taller, thinner person, I prefer a little bit less stack in my everyday shoes. I think for this type of purpose, I'm a little bit less concerned about weight and more concerned about comfort and a little bit more stability. I just want simplicity really from an everyday shoe. For me, something like the Vomero 16, which I think you can pick up at the moment on discount, around about 80 pounds, or even the Reebok Energy 3, that's always discounted and a fantastic everyday shoe. Let me know what your selected everyday shoes are, guys, down in the comments. In fact, you can give me a whole roundup towards the end of the video of all your selections for a running shoe rotation. A specific allowance of miles during a week should be at faster paces to help you develop that top line speed. Easy miles for your sort of aerobic level and those faster pace miles to start pushing into that anaerobic area. Speed shoes, I hear this quite a lot guys. Fast shoes or fast running shoes. It's just below standard. Your legs are going to do the fast running, shoes aren't going to make you do it or enable you to do it. You are the person that enables you to do that. Yes, a shoe may help facilitate some of those faster paces, but they're not going to automatically give it to you. Yes, a pace shoe may help facilitate some faster frenzied forays into foam fun, but just remember that it's you doing it. Never be fooled by some ridiculous video saying that these are the best fast shoes and if you get one of those, you'll run fast. 
Never forget that. Yes, it cannot be denied that a lighter, more nimble shoe might help you get there. Perhaps you can look out for a shoe with a part plate midsole, maybe a nylon plate. People tend to find those a little bit more forgiving. I have seen lots of people pick up the next percent or even the zoom fly and expect to get on really well with them first time out the box, but it just doesn't happen. I think a lot of the time those plates are in there as a stabilizing element and that's about it. I often find that a lot of these shoes these days are very similar to race models. They just build in a little bit of extra bulk into the design of the upper, perhaps just making the shoe a little bit more resilient to extra miles of training. And they might change up the foams as well so that they just take the pounding a little bit better there's a bit more durability and longevity to it. Socrates and Dolphin Speed model, for example, hits the spot. Light, nimble, and very forgiving, but with a slightly less rigid plate in this instance. You could even have a look at Hoka's fantastic and quite cheap Rocket X as well. Slightly more affordable and comes with a carbon plate to boot. Speed sessions help to expand your pace range and having an appropriate shoe around to do this will be invaluable. I think everybody's pace range is different, isn't it? We must remember that. Sometimes you'll see a review where somebody will mention that the shoe's good between a certain range of paces. Well, that's their paces, right? So you've got to remember that everyone's a little different here. My expectation of fast is perhaps quite different to yours. Always remember that there's somebody quicker out there than you and there's someone slower than you too. Keeps you humble. I don't think you're gonna have to go crazy to pick up a pace shoe. I mean, uh, the Hoka Rincon 3, you could look at that as being a pace shoe. Nice and light, nimble, and it's relatively cheap. There's a whole host of options out there, guys, including the New Balance Fuel Cell Rebel 2. You could even look at the Brooks Hyperion Tempo. What a shoe that is. Bit of a overlooked cult classic, that one for me. Lovely blue nitro midsole. Certainly worth taking for a spin. On to the long runs now. Those anxiety inducing 15 mile plus efforts that people are only allowed to do on a Sunday. These are normally the favourites of half marathon or full Snickers training people. The true enthusiasts. I think long runs are really great to improve that mental toughness, the leg strength and not to mention that engine endurance. I think a long run shoe and perhaps what you might call a max cushion shoe could fall into the same category here. Just to provide a more forgiving, very sort of padded ride. We're on quite a bit of midsole there, a plush upper to relieve a little bit of the strain, just to help protect the legs and the feet a little bit over those longer miles. Again, I find that there's a bit of overlap here in terms of distinction between a long run shoe what you might call an easy day shoe and a max cushion shoe. I find the distinctions here are a little bit hard to swallow at times and often it feels like another way for manufacturers to produce a new line or model of shoes and try to sell them to you where there's actually very little difference. Just little minor changes here or there. A few millimeters extra of foam. Shoes like the Puma Magnify Nitro spring to mind here as actually been quite different to the rest of the lineup. Maybe the Glide Ride 2, maybe the Solar Boost 3. I guess you could even fit the Vomero 16 in there if you wanted to. I think for many people their easy day or like daily shoe might actually do the trick here rather than having to shell out for an extra shoe. I'd suggest you think very hard here if you actually really need a long run shoe. If you're just doing five and 10 Ks, perhaps racing here and there. Infrequently, I just don't think you need one. I just don't think it's really a vital component of a running shoe rotation if you're doing those shorter distances. If you're going half or upwards, maybe you might need one. We'll move on to race shoes now, or as other people refer to them as fast shoes. Now, this is where the whole idea of a running shoe rotation just completely falls flat for me. The stack of cards just starts to fall apart. It's like shoe Jenga. As I said before, you run the miles, not the shoes. No shoe's going to improve your kilometer splits or lower your 5k PB. It's just not going to happen. I'd suggest if you're racing any distance in a new shoe, just don't do it. Try the shoe out before. Don't just throw them on come race day and expect wizard-like results. You're not gonna get miracles out of it. You need to try the shoe out. You would not use a brand new guitar at a gig at Wembley Stadium, would you? Just wouldn't happen. Get to know your tools during your training. Become one with your shoe beforehand. You know what I mean. I've covered my favorite race shoes in a variety of different videos over the last few years. I think some of those super shoes that have been released actually, in my humble opinion, work for all sorts of different running scenarios now. 
not just race shoes. I think there's some fantastic maximally cushioned pace shoes out there that work for a whole variety of different paces now. It's not like it was when the Vaporfly 4% came out where it just sort of disappears before your very eyes under your feet. Some of those shoes are really robust now. They'll last the test of time. In fact, I think they make some of the shoes that I've discussed in this rotation video completely irrelevant. I think we're in the past where race shoes were saved back for race day. Now these more durable models work for hundreds of miles. People use them in training all the time. I think you've got a max cushioned Zoom X model, maybe like the Alpha Fly or the Next Percent. They're gonna last you a fair old time unless you smash the heels to bits. You've seen mine, guys. I take them up to 100 miles a second. There's hardly any damage there whatsoever. I think with research being done recently showing that the actual plate part of the shoe adds very little performance, and it's all about the midsole foam, really, that improves the efficiency of the runner. Shoes like the RC Elite 2 from New Balance or the Adi Zero Adios Pro 2 make for some great shoes that you can just use more frequently. Kind of gets a bit more value back from them. For racing now, all of the Max Cushion shoes are very low weight options. I think some of the running shoe rotation ideas of the past have been pushed to the side a little bit. It just begins to break down here. I think super shoes with very high energy return midsole foams have minimized the need for multiple training shoes. I mean, just look at the Kenyans. They got like a pair of Pegasus and some next percents and jobs are good. And nobody can tell me that those ladies and those chaps don't know what they're doing when it comes to running. They're using the next percent on dirt roads. No issues there. Hundreds of miles. Yeah, you've seen it. You've seen Kip Choge's little book. Do you think this whole running shoe rotation thing's a bit of a FOMO? You know, the feeling of missing out. I try and avoid that as much as I can. Someone's got a brand new shoe, holds it up. Do I really need it? Do I want it? Probably not. Do I want to get out and run? Yes, I do. I do think giving your shoes a break though over the course of a week is a good idea. If you've got a smaller running shoe rotation there where you can perhaps extend the life of your favorite pace shoe, for example, by utilizing something else in between a more daily offering, I think that's gonna help out. It's gonna extend the life of the midsole. I mean, you could probably just get away with the Vomero 16 and then the Adi Zero Adios Pro 2. If I just had to take two shoes with me to a desert island where there's some roads to run on. What do you make of all this, guys? I think I'm a little bit veering towards Running shoe rotations don't make as much sense as they used to. I think having a multiple few pairs will help out. Where do you stand on this, guys? Let me know your favorite shoes for such a rotation and your thoughts and opinions on this topic down in the comments. My right arm really hurts right about now. A quick musical interlude for you. After yesterday's one, it seems only right to let you know what my second 45 RPM single was. If I got this right, it was the Beatmasters featuring the Cookie Crew, Rock the House. I was a big fan of stuff on the Rhythm King label. They had some really fantastic stuff on there. I think Bomb the Bass were also on that label and also S Express, that famous uh, band fronted by Mark Moore. What great music around that period, 1988. I wish I still had some of those records. I think some of them did disappear at one point. Such an exciting time for music as well. So many different new genres. It's like a big cauldron really of new sounds that you could enjoy. And let's not forget the top 40 as well. I used to love tuning into that and trying to uh, capture my favorite tracks on the old tape. And the rundown as well, the top 40 rundown. I think I might do something similar perhaps towards Christmas. Maybe the top 20 shoes of the year. I'll do it in a top of the pop style. What do you think, guys? Yeah, go and check this one out. Fantastic production on this one by the Beatmasters featuring the Cookie Crew. Rock the house. Thanks for sticking with me to the end of this rather strange video, guys, where I kind of proved myself wrong, I suppose. I don't really believe in running shoe rotations all that much, I think. If you're enjoying the content here, guys, make sure you hit that subscribe button, but also click the bell below for notifications when we roll those new videos out for you. And it really helps the channel out too if you give this video a thumbs up like, but also share it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you.